Welcome to Treated Table. I'm your host, Sarah Golubart Gorman. We're in BMC Bakes, Harrisonburg's gluten free bakery, and today we're making seeded coriander crackers with a cherry chutney with Shenandoah Valley Orchards cherries. So, what is chutney? Chutney is a condiment from India, typically containing fruits, vinegar, sugar, and spices. It's a tangy accompaniment to a main dish. Think cranberry sauce on Thanksgiving turkey. It's also a great addition to your charcuterie board. Let's get started with the seeded crackers. So our seeded crackers are gluten-free. What's gonna hold them together in this recipe is gonna be the chia and the flax. Both of these seeds are naturally gelatinous when water is added. So these are gonna be the glue that's gonna hold our crackers together. Our first seed is going to be one and a half cups of sunflower seeds. Now we're gonna add half a cup of flax seeds. Two thirds cups of pumpkin seeds. Two and a half tablespoons of chia seeds. Also, two and a half tablespoons of sesame seeds. One teaspoon of sea salt. One teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. For the flavoring for our crackers, these coriander seeds are really gonna bring like a zesty, citrusy flavor. So we're gonna crush them with a mortar and pestle. We'll need one and a half teaspoons of the seeds. And we're gonna just lightly crush them and then get them to release their flavor. With the mortar and pestle, you're not creating quite a powder for the coriander seeds, you're just breaking them up to release the flavor. So we're gonna add our one and a half teaspoons of crushed coriander to our crackers. Now the one and a half cups of water is going to bring everything together. So after we add in this water, we're gonna mix everything and let it sit on the counter for about a half an hour. That's gonna let all of the gelatinous aspects of the chia and flax do their magic. So you wanna give these a, a stir until everything is nice and incorporated. So each of the seeds is gonna absorb this salt water as well, so the brine is really gonna flavor each element of this cracker. Yeah, when it comes to gluten-free crackers, it sounds like it's gonna be complicated, but these are such a great high-protein, nutrient-dense option because basically it's seeds, spices, and water. So this is a great whole food option for snacking. Our seeds are finished soaking and we're ready to spread them out to make the crackers. You can see how all of the seeds have absorbed that water mixture and so they're ready to be one big chunk of deliciousness. Okay, so you wanna use your spatula to spread the cracker mixture out over the entire sheet pan. I'm gonna scooch this up here because you really want to make sure that the edges are covered with the parchment paper. because so that's gonna help the crackers hold their shape. So you're gonna spread it out until the mixture is about one centimeter thick and nice and even throughout the tray. So once your crackers are all spread evenly, you're gonna bake them for one hour at 285. You'll know they're finished when the top of the mixture is dry and the bottom is nice and golden. When you break them up, they're gonna be lots of irregular shapes, which is, which is fun. But if you really want to have even crackers, you can use a pizza cutter or even a knife to score them so that when you go and snap them after they're done baking, that you have nice even segments. Let's put this in the oven. For the chutney, Toasting our spices in olive oil is gonna be our first step. Let's prep our other ingredients before we hit the stove. We're gonna need one cup of chopped onion. You wanna use a red onion for this dish, and not just because cherries are red, but onions have different flavors, just like different apples have different flavors too at Shenandoah Valley Orchards. A red onion is gonna have a vastly different flavor from a Vidalia onion or a sweet white onion. So a red onion is what is called for in this recipe. It's gonna go really well with our spices. We need one teaspoon of freshly grated ginger. My favorite way to prep ginger for grating is just break off a piece. In this case, it's about two inches, and then use the back of the spoon 
to scrape off the skin of the ginger. The peeler takes a lot of the ginger flesh with it, while this process leaves as much of the ginger as possible while removing the, the skin. So you wanna reveal about an inch and a half of ginger that's gonna equate to what we need for this recipe. Now to grate the ginger, I'm gonna use a microplane. This is a lot easier to use than a box grater because you have a lot of control. And for fine grating like ginger and garlic, these are really perfect. I'm gonna grate until I have one teaspoon. Okay, there we go. Let's head to the stove top. So you want one teaspoon of olive oil, basically as hot as you can get it without the oil burning. So keep a close eye on it and don't let it smoke. So once the oil is nice and hot, you're gonna add a half a teaspoon of fennel seed. So we're toasting the seeds to really release the flavor. A half teaspoon of fennel, a half teaspoon of cumin seeds, and then one bay leaf. If you have chunks of bay leaves like me, you can just do like two little pieces. You're gonna cook these until they're nice and brown. You know it's working when you can hear the seeds sizzling slightly and you can really start to smell them. And again, watch that oil closely so that you aren't burning it. And we are on high heat here. So once the seeds are nice and toasty and brown and sizzling, you're gonna add your one cup of chopped onion. And cook the onion until they are translucent. This will be about five minutes. You wanna be continuously stirring throughout this process to make sure that none of the spices or the onion burn. All right, we're fragrant, beautiful. So now we're gonna add our two cups of cherries. In our last video, we talk about how to pit fresh cherries. So check out our last one to see the method. We're also gonna add a quarter cup of brown sugar. We're gonna add a tablespoon of lemon juice and three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And so we're deglazing the bottom of the pan here where our ginger kind of stuck to it. So you wanna kind of scrape a little bit as you're stirring to make sure you're scraping up all of that gingery, spicy goodness. The end result here is gonna be a super, super tangy sauce. It's gonna go great with our crackers and goat cheese. So once you're deglazed and everything is nice and integrated, you're gonna bring this mixture to a boil and then you're gonna lower the heat till you have a, a rapid simmer and let that sit on the stove for about 40 to 45 minutes, stirring occasionally until you have a nice thick sauce. So after 40 to 45 minutes, you should have a nice thick jammy chutney. If your cherries are still really chunky, you can use the edge of your spatula and kind of just chop everything down till it's more or less incorporated. It's nice to have a little bit of chunk in your chutney. We don't want like a puree situation. So after we remove this from the stovetop, it's gonna continue to gel and thicken as it cools. You can serve it at room temperature or you can store it in the fridge and serve it cold, it's up to you. It's now time to assemble our crackers, goat cheese, and chutney. This is gonna make your charcuterie board shine. So since we left our crackers whole, we're gonna snap them into irregular shapes and sizes. Oh, yes. And just arrange them on our plate where they will await their chutney decoration. So again, the flax and chia really create this crackery shape that holds together awesome. Now that our crackers are on the plate, we're gonna add some Rasborn Farms Chev. They're a goat farm located in the Shenandoah Valley and their goat cheese is so light and creamy and delicious. So let's add a little bit of this to our cracker. Goat cheese is a great soft cheese that pairs really well with something tangy like chutney. Now that we're all shoved up, we can add a dollop of chutney, of our cherry chutney with our Shenandoah Valley Orchards cherries. I can't wait to taste this nutty, seedy cracker, creamy goat cheese, and this tangy chutney. And there you have it, charcuterie ready. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Oh my god. 
That is so good. Mmm, mmm, mmm. If you think this is delicious, stay tuned for what we're making next at Shenandoah Valley Orchards. Thank you.